What is up? Happy springtime. Happy April. Happy almost May. Happy vaccination time. I hope you guys have been having some safe fun getting vaccinated. I'm so pumped. I'm going for my second shot tomorrow. Pfizer gang. Y'all don't even know what I have in store for the next few months. This channel is about to shake up like crazy, but I figured I'd try to get in one more semi-traditional video in before we embark on a new adventure. Today, I want to tell you guys 12 things that I wish I knew before majoring in STEM. Before we get into all of the points of today's video, I can just hear you asking, Hannah, where did you get that jewelry from? It's so cute. You guys already know I got it from Ana Luisa. I love them so much. 90% of the jewelry I wear is from Ana Luisa. I love their products. I love them as a brand. They are committed to sustainability and ethical sourcing of materials. I've been wanting kind of coin-shaped earrings like this for so long, and I love this necklace because it matches my eyes, and I'm so excited to wear them all summer. And I know I'm not the only one. I know that you wanted to wait till Mother's Day, but here's your present now. <laughs> okay. Her heart, because oh, I love you. Oh, I love those. Oh, <laughs> Hannah. Thank you. They're so cute. I know, I thought you'd really like them. I do really like them. They look so good. Mm. Happy early Mother's Day. Don't Thank worry, you. I'll still get you something for Mother's Day too. Okay. Yes, right now Anna Luisa is running a Mother's Day sale 15% off all items. Anna Luisa jewelry is a great gift for yourself, your mom, or any other loved ones in your life. These pieces are carbon neutral and so long lasting. I have several pieces of Anna Luisa jewelry that I've had for years and they're as perfect as I got them on day one. I love my mom so much. She's the sweetest person in the whole world and has always been so supportive of everything I've done. I and mean, I'm so glad those earrings made her so happy. If you want to take advantage of this awesome 15% off sale, you can click the link in my bio to head over to Anna Luisa's website and place your order. The last day for guaranteed standard shipping before May 9th is Wednesday, May 5th, so head over soon. I only promote brands that I use myself and that I trust and I love Anna Luisa and your loved ones will as well. Number one, the intro classes, the prereqs, those are all going to be the worst, but not necessarily the hardest. Those classes are notoriously sucky because you take them most often your freshman, maybe early into your sophomore year, and it's just painfully fundamental. I'm talking physics, math, chemistry, maybe bio if you're a bio person. Why are these classes the worst? Because they're usually the biggest. Less personalized attention, more broader concepts. And well, there's a good chance these might be the classes that you struggle in the most and, you know, maybe get the worst grades in, they aren't necessarily the hardest. Objectively, I know that the engineering classes I'm taking now are much more difficult than the classes I took freshman year. However, I have so much more experience under my belt that it's definitely not as painful. Suffering in the beginning will only make you smarter. Number two, don't use Chegg, bro. Consider this a warning. I know things have been online over the past year and you might be really, really tempted. However, I have just heard too many horror stories over the past year in particular about Chegg reporting back to the school, giving students names and email addresses and IP addresses and them getting suspended or worse for violating the honor principle. Be smart. Number three, you can balance a social life and rigorous academics. This is something I always see on social media. TikToks of like the engineering student or like the chemistry major sitting in their room while like all of their friends are pre-gaming or getting ready to go out or something. And well, yeah, you probably won't see an engineering or physics major going out every single night of the week. Though I don't see most people go out every night of the week, you can absolutely go out and have fun in college and maintain academic success. It's all about finding balance. Early on in the term, get everything done, so if you need to slack off a little bit later, you have a little bit of a cushion. Or on the shorter scale, get everything done early in the week, early in the day, so you can have that time for yourself later. Number four, you're not on some moral high ground or superior to anyone because you do STEM. I was the type of person in like the beginning of high school, for example, I was like, oh, I'm never gonna touch politics. I don't even wanna hear about it. Like, it's so gross, they're so snaky. And then I started 
learning about social issues and political issues that I care about. And then, you know, going into college, I was like, oh, bro, econ majors, finance snakes, oh, so snaky. Then I started learning about the stock market and how to invest. Basically what I'm saying is not everything is as snaky as it might seem, but at the same time, just because certain majors have better, more moral reputations, that doesn't mean they're actually better. You know, as a STEM major, you're still gonna have to do some of those snaky things that business students do. You're still gonna have to network. You're gonna be competing with your peers for interviews. You're gonna have to have an elevator pitch. Almost anyone in any field can do good or bad for the world and at the end of the day that actual field doesn't matter as much as actions. Five, you'll probably encounter imposter syndrome and I think this can manifest itself in two different ways. There might be times where you feel like you don't belong where you are, or you think that other people are like smarter than you or whatever, or you don't belong there. That is a very common feeling and that is the classic definition of imposter syndrome. For me, I mostly feel imposter syndrome in like the scientific community. For example, this channel is called Hannah Like Science. I used to post about science and cool topics I liked all the time in middle and high school and all that, but ever since I've gotten more and more into my education, the idea of doing that makes me feel like like a fraud or something. Like, I don't actually know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm still learning. Imposter syndrome is a very real thing. Six, take the time to research your classes and the professor. While the professor isn't everything, the professor you have matters. Different professors teach in different ways, they test in different ways, and they interact with their students in different ways. I like recorded lectures and I really don't mind flipped classrooms, so finding professors whose teaching style matches my learning style has been very beneficial for me and I wish that's something I started doing earlier on. Number seven, it's okay to struggle. In fact, you will struggle. But that's totally okay, right? Everybody has strengths and everyone has weaknesses, even within their own field. Like you guys know, I'm an engineering major, but I feel super, I feel strong when it comes to system analysis and design, but I am weak when it comes to, you know, circuit analysis. Electrical engineering is not my strong suit. It's not intuitive to me. It took me a very long time to understand circuits, but that's okay. There are other people who can do that. I don't need to do that. I'm gonna graduate college with two STEM degrees and I will have only ever taken one chemistry course in my life and it was AP chemistry in high school. That's it. Play to your strengths and know your weaknesses. You can't do it alone. I mean, you can, but it's not as fun and it's gonna be a much more difficult path. Having friends in your classes, being involved in clubs related to your major, being affiliated with identity groups, knowing how to make your way around your college's resource centers are all great ways to get help. There have been way more times over the past few years than I'd like to admit where I've just been banging my head against the desk because I've been trying to figure out this one problem for just way too long and I've been so stuck and I've tried everything and nothing's working and I just shoot some Someone in my class a quick text eventually they get back to me and suddenly everything makes sense of course if that's allowed given your college's honor principal guidelines it's honestly just not worth wasting your time next get research experience but not just for the resume padding there are so many pros to getting involved with research research gives you a place to explore your interests develop your technical skills engage with the academic community and make new connections these connections sometimes may be friendships they might be be mentorships or new connections to add to your network. As a junior in college, everyone keeps telling me how important networking is and I truly do believe them. Also, like I said, you can make really good friends. 11, I think there are more careers than just research. When I went into college, I thought that being a scientist was just working in a lab all day. That's not necessarily true. There's so many things you can do with a STEM degree. One of the reasons I chose to major in engineering is because I like it, I enjoy it. And two, it makes me super marketable. I can go on and I can be an engineer or I can apply engineering practices to other fields. I can make another video on this down the line, but if you don't think research is necessarily your thing, know that there's a lot you can still do in STEM. Speaking of a lot more, number 12 is you are not confined to STEM. Being multidisciplinary is actually a huge advantage. More and more employers and companies and all that today are realizing the importance of cognitive diversity or diversity of thought. 
Your team is more productive when they can approach problems in different ways. Having a multidisciplinary education gives you multiple lenses through which you can look at problems and find solutions. Some people think I'm kind of weird for, and I kind of kick myself sometimes for going to a liberal arts school for a STEM education, but at the end of the day, this is something I really appreciate about a liberal arts curriculum. And that's it for this video. Those are 12 things I wish I knew slash I've learned along the way about being a STEM major. What did I miss? Is there anything that stands out about your education that surprised you? please let me know in the comments below. Like I mentioned, the next few videos are going to be a series, a little different from what I've done before, but I'm super excited to embark on this adventure, and I hope you guys will stick with me over the next few months. All right, so again, I'm Hannah. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for supporting this video. Get 15% off for Mother's Day or yourself or anything with the link below. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching, and bye! Bye!